My mom and dad growing up had one of the worst relationships that you could ever imagine and they finally had a messy divorce. Well, it kind of shattered my reality of relationships and I did not ever have a girl until Harper came into my life and I decided whatever, I'll give her a chance because I really like her. Well, it was the worst thing ever and yeah, it went south, we broke up, but then, eh, I found another girl named Haley. And when I tell you the link between Harper and Haley, you will not believe it. I'm 32 and male, and I've got a little doubtful about the funds and the management in my firm and a few months ago. Even so, I believed my wife, Haley, would resolve all the conflicts while I dealt with the expansion ideas. It stayed like that for a while, but I stopped receiving updates about the issue. I assumed it was resolved, but only a week ago, I found it was the same. Every time I visit the firm, fewer employees work there than I expected. Haley always had an answer ready. It was either some employees who were on leave or some who worked from home. I took it at face value. She knew better. She was handling finances, and I knew that she would regulate the finances as needed. However, as I mentioned, after a meeting a few months ago, I had a gut feeling that something was wrong. Something was amiss, but I could not really pinpoint what it was. I shared my doubts, however, with Haley, and she promised to look into it. Because I trusted her so much, I felt relieved until about a week ago. Besides dealing with the affairs at the company, I've grown suspicious of Haley's relationship with someone particular from the past. I'm unsure how I should explain this strange feeling and why I fear the idea that my assumption might be correct. But I do not like this feeling at all. To help you understand my situation, I'll tell you a little bit about my life. Perhaps this will help you understand my situation better. Maybe you'll find something that I have yet to do. My story begins with my parents' divorce. The divorce, as you expected from any other, was bad. If my memory is correct, then there were some extraordinary moments from their divorce hearing. This kind of moments you watch on YouTube and curse at how dumb the couples are. I hope you have an image in your mind. Even if you do not watch those kinds of videos, you must have seen a couple of couples just screaming at each other, right? And the reason usually stems from miscommunication and intolerance. My parents were that kind of couple. Except there was not only one party wrong, both did and said things that could easily be considered abusive. At the same time, they did and said things that you could easily consider loving because I witnessed all that growing up. I had little ideas of how to distinguish between right and wrong. I've instead started believing that we all live in the little gray area. My parents, for the most part, live there too. My earliest memory is of them fighting, and my last memory of them is of them fighting too. The issue with my parents was that none of them were completely right or wrong. I remember my father, being abusive. Similarly, I remember my mom's frequent manipulation, and throughout the time I understood them. There were moments where she did extraordinarily kind things for him, and there were moments when she, well, he did something similar. What affected me the most was that I could never understand which side to take. The moment I took the side of a parent, they did or said something I disagreed with. It happened regardless of whom I tried to pay more attention to. It continued until the day they divorced. By their time, their case was closed and I had made my mind up. I hated them both. They and their relationship had influenced and impacted me in ways that I could not even fathom. I needed space. I knew I needed to keep my distance from them to make sense of everything and recover my sanity. It came as a shock to both, well, because they probably imagined I would be with them. I found something for myself. Because of a lack of funds, I could not go to college. Hence, instead of lamenting too much about the bitter truth, I focused on a vision of a business venture. It was a far-fetched idea, yes. Even so, I kept it on. It took me years before I could even find my first 10 clients. 
then it took me a couple more years to find faithful people to work with. After that, it was comparatively smooth, and when I first met Harper, my firm was doing well enough. We met at a mutual friend's engagement party, and we picked up quite fast. But until a few months ago, I had not imagined the interaction moving further than that. Well, huh, because of my past and my parents' disastrous relationship, I gave little importance to any kind of relationship. I have not imagined myself in a relationship fearing that I would end up like my mom or dad. Harper, as cliche as it sounds now, worked her way through that. It was only a few months after our first meeting that I gave our relationship a second thought. By the tenth month, we were already in a deep relationship. My life with Harper was dramatic, yes. The first few weeks were indeed blissful, but whenever I think about them now, all I could think of is how blissfully ignorant I was. Harper was a charming woman. She knew when to say the most appropriate things and when to keep her mouth shut. It helped me cope with my issues and simultaneously improve my relationship with her. Because she made so many adjustments, I, well, did my best to give back just as much. I gave her space and let her speak when she wanted to, and when things seemed harder on different sides, I financially supported her. She looked hesitant to me the first time I did that, but she grew a bit more comfortable as time went by. Because I've grown a lot since our breakup, I admit her comfort and ease in handling my finances were extraordinary. She would spend however much she wanted and then return home with a sad face, claiming that she had been reckless, did not check, and would just, well, not repeat it. It remained calmed only until she did repeat it, however. In the years that we dated, it was continuous. I did not have the heart to discuss it because I feared that she would leave me. It's ironic to me now, but it took me a while to realize I was becoming like my mother. I hated it. Before my 27th birthday, she broke up with me. It was sudden, and I had not seen it coming, although a part of me was relieved that she had no control anymore. Another part was scared of her absence, and I did not know how I would handle myself post-breakup. She left, and she never came back, and I fell into a vicious cycle of excessive alcohol consumption. The falling numbers of clients brought me back to my senses, and the only thing I had was my firm. I was determined to love nothing else. It was then, nearly two years later, that Haley came into my life. Haley was a lot different than Harper. For one thing, she did not try to control my life or the people I made friends with. She loved spending time in nature, and one could always find her in the nearest park if I was not available to talk to her. Uh, it was nice with her, even in the beginning. She made me more comfortable than Harper ever did, and she claimed to be estranged from her parents, and she did not like making friends after her best friend's death in a freak accident. Her life was almost the same as mine, except I never really had a friend thanks to my lack of emotion. She has no siblings, and her relationship with her parents has almost always been bad. I've never met her parents, and she insists that I do not have a reason to either. I would not like them, she says. She never gave me a reason why her relationship was like that, but I've always assumed that she's dealt with similar parents as mine. In the years that I've known her, I've never really seen her interact with anyone except my colleagues whenever they come over for dinner. That is all the interaction I've seen from her, except when she goes out and interacts with whoever she can. I've never assumed anything, and she's never given me a reason to. She interacts with whoever she comes across, and I'm assuming most of them are just strangers. She's never mentioned a name other than that of her parents. She got involved with her firm's affairs, and after a little push, she got directly involved with one of them and the departments, too. Her interest lay in music and art, and she joined classes after we got into a relationship, and often ventured out of her comfort zone to stay fit by joining the gym. Although, yes, her resilience to do so was indeed just as weak as mine, she would join a gym pay for its membership, and then drop it in a week or so, not going. 
Then, without any provocation, she would pick up another gem, pay for its membership, and then drop it again. I did not consider it an issue. It seemed relatable to me. I mean, I've done that as well. However, it is only now that I've realized that although I paid for her classes at the gym membership, among other things, she never really showed me proof of the same. How do I explain this to you? Let me give it a try. Maybe uh, you'll understand. Haley joined several classes and received coaching after we got together. She would alternate between different gyms throughout the city, and she talked about a friend who had recently opened her boutique and said that it would be nice if she could invest some money in it. For her sake, I added some funds to what she had already kept aside for this purpose. Then I forgot about it, and we moved on. Similar, she had this or that to do, and she never said she needed money or help, but I eventually handed her whatever she wanted. However, it is only now that I realize she never gave me proof. Proof of the fact that she had joined music or art classes or gym memberships or anything. She would be out of the house for hours and return to tell me tales of the hours that she spent in particular places. Because she always had something to fill in the blanks. I never asked her for receipts or recordings to keep safe. You know, just in case. In turn, she never shared them with me. I've only recently started thinking of these things, and the more I think about it, the more sense my firm situation and lack of measures to correct the disparities make. Even more, the more I think about Haley, the more I'm reminded of Harper. I used to think there was no relation or semblance between these two, but the more I'm getting to understand her, the more I realized I've once again missed several red flags. Maybe the first one is about their subtle ways of maintaining distance from me. You cannot understand this from a distance, but you know very well what it is when you truly observe. Then their picky eating habits, both of them have spent more days dieting than eating. I know because I've observed it. There's been several instances where I've talked about this particular issue. I've not succeeded with either of the two and they've always carried on with their dieting. Even though I do not want to think about it, their dressing sense is almost identical. They like the same brands, and if Harper has not changed in all these years, ugh, moving on, it's the way they carry themselves around whenever it comes to money. More specifically, my money. They don't show a keen interest in money, but they are always ready for it when the need arises. Something always needs investing, and urgently too. The offers and the ideas always sound the most interesting, although I never hear about the results of any of them. Perhaps I'm at fault for not being more careful with the finances. Even more so, maybe I should stop talking this way about Haley. I mean, she's pregnant, have I told you that? I'll assume she's making plans for the baby, unless I have a reason to not believe so. In the meantime... I've hired external people to look into the finances and records of the firm. The audit will start next week, as planned. After that, I believe I will have my answers, and until then, people, I'll take a break from this post. It is indeed stressing me out. However, if there's anything that you might feel to be curious, please share it with me. I could use some help. Maybe we will even become friends, <laughs> even if it's just online. Well, until then, you can also give me advice on how to tackle this issue or if there's something I missed. Update number one. Hey, people. It's been a long time, has it not? I mean, several weeks in the following post. I've gone through a lot of emotions. Some of you asked me to talk to if you need, well, and I need it. But the recent revelations have been so stressful that I've not dared to speak about it. I'm sure that I could not even form a proper thought and sentence until yesterday. Nothing particular happened yesterday, but I decided to share it with someone. Perhaps you, the internet audience of my failing life, will be helpful. Honestly, I don't know where to begin, so I'll start with the results of the audit. As I mentioned last time, I hired external auditors. It took weeks to identify the fraud and false transactions before the final report. 
Haley was absent during the final meeting, citing different reasons for her absence. When she stopped at our baby, it was obligated by her demands, and I could not have forced her. Uh, the meeting was the most interesting. I'll skip to what directly affects my relationship with Haley. It is indeed true that I found other minor fraudsters, but Haley has managed to become the biggest one. In the years following our relationship, particularly after we got serious about the company's internal affairs, although Haley's life was mostly about her interest, she invested a lot of time into the firm. I'd never found anything wrong with it. A helping hand from the family meant a lot, and even so, after the little meeting, I cannot help but think back to the moments of suspicion. Did I seriously miss out on many details because I was blinded by the idea that I might lose out on another possible relationship? Most likely. <laughs> Even so, here are some details that are confirmed and, well, affirmed in the meeting. Are you ready for this? Because the financial issues were so big. It took the team a whole week to get to the bottom of it. After that, you know it requires more time for further evaluation, at its center, they found Haley and her incredible number of transactions. I'm unsure what she did with the money, but there were a lot of them. It was not only a case of embezzlement, however. She forced signatures for very important documents, and I'm assuming, with the help of some other employees, she made a fake few employee accounts. That essentially means there was a reason I always found less employees at the company than on the documents. Precisely because they never existed. There was no Lynn, no Carol, no Hans, and a number of others that didn't exist. What she would do is approve payments to these people in the name of salary at the end of every month, but eventually transfer it all to her accounts. At first, there were only a few hundred dollars. Gradually, the amount would increase. As expected, it continued to grow until it reached thousands of dollars at one point. Because the firm is neither too big nor too small, and I dedicated my time to expanding ideas, carrying on with these frauds became easy. Furthermore, she was not the only one involved in these activities. She had helpers. What I could not understand were the occasional mentions of Harper. Despite almost all transactions conducted under Haley's name, there was another bank account which uh, I was very familiar. Upon reviewing my bank statement from years ago, I found the same numbers there, and I knew it held significance. What that was, I did not know. But I was aware that Haley knew Harper. Another puzzling aspect that's now come to my attention is Haley's extended hours away from home. If my assumptions are correct, she often met Harper behind my back. Given that both names were mentioned during the meeting, it's safe to assume they have ulterior motives. What are these motives, you ask? I've resolved to uncover. Although, this is also shocking. I've also contacted my lawyer, and I'm unsure where this will take me and how emotionally it will ruin me. But now I intend to solve this issue once and for all. If there is indeed something going on between Haley and Harper, then I deserve to know that. For years, Harper and I had no contact. Now my company's financial records say there were even if only a couple times. If there's a connection between my wife and ex-girlfriend, I'm sure these particular transactions were mistakes. For Haley to carry on with these for years and make a few mistakes in between, well, that makes sense to me, right? Perhaps she's just uh, assumed I was never going to check it. She'd always been some ways to make it look better than it was. Keeping me in the dark seems to be the requirement for people around me. First it was my parents, and now it's my wife, and perhaps even my ex-girlfriend. It's a silly, confusing situation, I know. Although, I've decided to confront Haley about the situation, with the assumption that she does not know about the audits and the results. I'm willing to take in suggestions, guys. Last time, some of your comments and advice helped me relax and deal with my thoughts better. I would appreciate responses of a similar kind. I promise to return with a quick update as soon as possible. Update number two. 
Hello again. I'm sorry this was another delayed update. I understand I'm actually taking weeks to update you on my issues. Well, anyhow, if you still remember where we left off, I talked to my wife and the conversations were not the most pleasant. When I informed my lawyer about the situation, he advised me to keep in touch with the cops about the audits and the recent updates on the financial situation at the firm. Just like some of you did, I followed through with the advice. It was no longer between Haley and me and possibly Harper, but even my firm was involved. Employees and staff were constantly talking about it, and I'm sure a few of them have been talking about it on SNS. Even so, before confronting Haley, I had different expectations about how she would react. I had created a couple of scenarios in which she passionately defended herself and tried to salvage our relationship for the sake of our child. Unfortunately, none of that happened. When I came back, she looked a little shocked. By the look alone, I knew she knew. To dissuade the situation, she talked about her recent hospital visits and updates about the baby. At the mention of the baby, I decided, well, what would be its fate? If anything I found today was true, then Haley would not have any rights to the baby. After the conversation, she would prove whether she was capable of being a decent human or not. There was no outcome. Unfortunately, Haley chose the wrong route. When I brought in the details of the financial transaction, she did not hesitate once, before warning me that she would call the police on me for abuse if I continued. Well, that warning surprised me, mostly because I had not expected it. I had a recorder on me, luckily, but I needed her to make a confession. We knew the police would get involved, but I needed her to admit it. Even though there were arguments between us, I trusted my wife. I was emotionally dependent on her. If anything were to go wrong tonight, it was going to ruin me too. That scared me so much that I mentioned our baby. In return, she gave this mean-looking expression, saying that she was sure I was on the right track. Even though it hurt me, I wanted her to continue. I knew this would not be easy, but I needed to get it done. Haley had fooled me for so long, and I have been the victim of my people so much that this change in her attitude did not surprise me. To be honest with you, I don't think I was much surprised by Haley's involvement in the firm's financial situation. The only thing that surprised me was a possible connection between Haley and Harper. Were they sisters? Were they friends? I'm unsure about both possibilities because Haley never mentioned a sister. The only close friend she mentioned was her best friend, who she claimed had died in an accident. Could it be that no such thing actually happened? Either there was no best friend or there was no death, I was not sure. To break her confidence, I directly asked about Harper. It was only then that she knew she was caught. Embarrassed at being caught, she fumbled over her words and warned that she would divorce me. I retorted that divorce was inevitable anyways, and the real question at hand was her ulterior motives. She claimed she had no idea what I was referring to, and I presented her with recordings. She fell silent for a moment, before her responses became even more fumbled. She insisted it was all Harper's doing and that she did not understand the role that she was playing. In response to my silence, she described how she had met Harper in their high school days, developed a friendship and maintained that connection even after college. It was during this time that Harper began dating me. She contended that Harper had only dated me until she could not tolerate my emotional drama any longer. Her words, it had been getting on her nerves and had reached a point where she could not bear it any longer. She eventually broke the news to Haley. Both of them realized that if Harper ended the relationship with me, the secure financial support would come to an end as well. This prompted Harper to devise a plot. Haley would meet me after the breakup and continue the same pattern. Their only condition was to avoid getting pregnant with my child. However, Haley became pregnant nonetheless. Since emotions were not a factor on Harper's end, and Haley initially had no desire for such responsibilities, their original idea was to perpetrate further fraud within the firm. The two of them decided that Haley would divorce me, 
file an assault and battery case against me for incidents in the past month and claim custody of the child? And leave me completely isolated. The plan was set in motion and was gaining speed, as Haley had contacted a lawyer a few weeks prior. It is worth noting that she used my money for this, by the way. However, before their scheme could progress, the results of the audit were out, exposing Haley and Harper's actions. I once again inquired about her next plan, and she reiterated her intention to charge me with assault. It was evident that she was unaware of the full scope of the matter, if not entirely. Haley was still a part of this fraud, even if it had been Harper's idea to continue the scheme, Haley played a pivotal role of an accomplice. I reminded her of this reality, and the idea that she could face prison time due to her involvement did not sit very well with her. I assured her that I would also win custody of the child, no questions asked. There was no way I would allow her to have any influence over my kid. I mean, I proceeded to call the police. While waiting their arrival, I inquired about their relationship with Harper. She disclosed that they were best friends, and when I questioned her statement about her best friend's demise in an accident, she confessed. It was all a lie. I assume her apparent lack of anger comes from her pregnancy because she's nearly six months along, and the thought of dealing with the situation at such a time terrifies me. I'm uncertain if she cares about the baby, but I certainly do. The police arrived, apprehended her, and escorted her away. Throughout the ordeal, I implored them to exercise caution regarding the baby. The expression she gave when I handed over the recordings to the police was quite something. I must admit, you would not have comprehended the expression either. So, after her, things were so painful at work and home that the recording this update slipped my mind. Harper tried to slip away, but she was caught. Both of the best friends are facing a multitude of charges, and I'm sure the future does not look good for either of them. The thought of updating you guys came only after a visit I had to make to Haley's parents. One of you did say that the estrangement from her parents could have been due to her nature. Well, you were right. Haley's parents knew about her behavior and her friendship with Harper. They had a falling out years ago because Haley would not listen. Afraid that it would affect her plans, she kept them away from me. Sometimes I think I could have avoided all this by just meeting them. Then again, how could I have known? So guys, tell me. Did I do the right thing? I'll update you for the last time sometime soon, but let me know what you think about this situation in the comment section down below. Update number three. Hi, this is most certainly going to be my last update and a short one. I'll sum up my last few days quickly. I found out what Harper and Haley did with all the money. They were investing in a growing business, which seemed too good to be true. They bought themselves a home in the suburbs and they were planning to open a little boutique of their own in the next year. However, because Haley got pregnant, they had to shift the last plan. Though they were going to open the boutique, they decided to take another route. It was through filing for divorce, charging me with assault and possibly winning child custody. It would have been in their favor too had it not been for the audit. The entire case was against them. As you might have expected, I won. I also won child custody, and Harper and Haley, on the other hand, they were going to jail for a pretty severe, lengthy time. I'm unsure if anyone came to meet Harper, but I'm sure no one came to meet Haley, except for me. The visits I made were for the sake of my baby. It was never about her. In the weeks following the entire ordeal, I can confidently say that I'm thoroughly tired of human connections. Not a single relationship has worked out for me, regardless of how much care I've put into each one. If my baby was not involved, I would have given up on all this and devoted myself to my firm. I've decided to start therapy, so that whenever the baby arrives, I'll be ready. I don't want a reflection of my ex-wife and my past in that innocent soul. I intend to keep it that way for as long as possible. So, the one thing I can take from this story is Harper and Haley 
and OP's parents basically ruined his thoughts on relationships. The poor guy will probably never date another girl for the rest of his life. I do want to know what you guys think of this. The only justice that I can think of from this story is the fact that Harper and Haley are going to prison because what they did was so crazy, rare, and just absurd, I couldn't even believe what I was reading. I want to hear from you guys, though, what you would do if you were in OP's position because, man, this was a whirlwind. My name's Mr. Redito. I want to thank you guys for joining me today. I narrate stories every single day, and we cover so many different genres. I'm talking mother-in-law disputes, workplace disputes, relationship problems, inheritance dramas, Karen in the Wild dramas. I mean, it goes on and on. And also, you can check out my new channel. It's all about revenge. I don't know if you guys have been a part of the channel for quite some time, but some of these characters in these stories, I just wish they would get some revenge. That's why I've made this new channel, which is handpicking revenge stories all across the internet. So make sure you check out Mr. Redito's Revenge. You can find the link down below or just type it in the YouTube search bar, Mr. Redito's Revenge. Guys, have an amazing day and remember, it's cool to be kind. See ya.